Hello and welcome to the Winter Circle. I'm your host, Dr. Sean. So let's continue the conversation we've been having on how you can win and how we can win together. Each week we have a guest on the show who cares a lot about what's going on in our society, but who also has special expertise in helping us to win in all areas. The guest today is a coach, a health and wellness coach, um, and she focuses on women in particular. This is Women's Month. May is, and so we're focusing on women's health. And so I'm really happy and excited to have Tam Luke. Um, she, with her organization, has been helping women all over the world to achieve highest levels of health and performance. Tam, welcome to the Winter Circle. Wonderful to have you. Thank you so, so much for having me. <laughs> you know, this area of personal growth, I've been thinking about it for a long time, maybe not in those terms. And I know that you focus on it like every day. That seems to be uh, your work. So I'm really happy to get your input. What got you excited about this area called personal growth and how you um, see it in terms of people winning? Well, you know, uh, you know, you and I have known each other for quite a long time. And you were one of the first people who I realized was doing some personal growth. There was a book that you had at the time called The Road Less Traveled. I remember as a, a young woman, I, and it was the first time I had even thought about something like that. And I picked up the book because you had that book. And so that was my first, I think, foray into personal development or personal growth. Then when I became older, I started to realize, especially when I look at my parents who were entrepreneurs, I started to realize there was a connection between entrepreneurship and personal growth. There was something about you cannot really grow in your life unless you uh, do the work on yourself. Uh, I started, there was a, uh, a quote by Jim Rohn that says, success is something you attract by the person you become. So in order to, be, to become successful, you have, to, you have to work on yourself and become something different. Only thing you can give is what you have. And if you are, are getting a certain result over and over again, well, that means you need to learn something new. Perfect, wonderful. Yes, Jim Rohn, one of the greats. And of course, M. Scott Peck, the author of The Road Less Traveled. That did start me on a road and it inspired me also. It just hit me at the right moment. I was open and I started that book. I was actually coming through no place other than your own hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio, during a crazy storm. And it was just the right uh, medicine for me and it started me on the road. So thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I've come across personal growth as a term, um, but of course, there's so many other terms. And then when many people use the term personal growth, they have different meanings. I wanted to get your take on what it means for you, the term personal growth, what is that? Yeah, personal growth is any kind of um, you know, changing of yourself, you know, working on yourself spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Personal growth can come in a lot of sh different shapes and forms. Uh, for a long time, personal development was the word I was using. The people, like you said, have different, you know, they have different feelings about that word. Uh, uh, self-help, self-development, all those things are kind of like interchangeably to some, some ex extent. I actually looked up um, personal growth to kind of get an idea, um, but you know, personal development is really the deliberate act of daily working on oneself to improve in every area of life in order to become a person of value to society or to be able to give back to others. And so, you know, it could really take on a lot of different shapes and forms. I think. I love it, and it does make sense that it would be so multifaceted. And also that many people would look at it from different angles and also have their own sort of spin. But I like the way you look at it because it encompasses so many different aspects of life. From your, and I know that you interact with a lot of people from all over the world and help you're able to leverage the internet, also your personality and your experience. From your uh, experience, what do you see as like a common barrier? or What are the main barriers that keep us from uh, growing personally, especially if we're not aware <laughs> that we can be growing personally. 
Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's a lot of factors. You know, there's, you know, something called nature versus nurture. Rather, you know, is how they were raised, you know, some people that are around them, the expect expectations of, of their life, you know, watching their parents, hearing what their parents say to them. You know, uh, it, a lot of times it comes back to what we believe and who we and who we think we are, um, who we aspire to be. A lot of that comes from nature and, you know, and nurture. So um, I think that everyone can grow to the extent in which they want to grow. Some people really go for it, really want to make differences in their life. Some people were born in really bad situations, but somehow innately they wanted more for their life. So they work really hard to grow and, and seek out things to get them out of their situation. Likewise, someone who is in a bad situation, they decide that they're, they're, they're meant to be in that bad situation and they don't, they don't do any, any, any more about it. They just stay there, they wallow in it, they deal with it and they just die in that, right? So it really is a, it's up to you because no matter, and we've seen examples of it all over, our, all over throughout history. You don't have to be born wealthy or in good situation uh, likewise, you can be born wealthy in a good situation, totally perfect parents, amazing opportunity, and end up, you know, dead as a teenager or, you know, in a bad situation, or drug overdose or something could happen because something in you just didn't believe that you deserved anything else. So uh, I think our biggest barrier to answer your question is really a lot has to do with us and what our decision is about ourselves. I see, I see. And I have seen this play out in the lives of friends and family and patients. I've seen this play out um, over and over and over. And I'll take that one step further and, um, and say that sometimes when I'm looking for and hoping for and praying for certain decisions to be made on the behalf of my patients. I'm hoping that they're going to um, manage a certain health condition one way or manage it another way, um, be able to get a handle on some lifestyle, let's say habits. I'm hoping that they will use these uh, opportunities as a way to grow personally. I wanted to get your take on what you've seen as some of the complications. And, and I really want to define this problem, but then um, later in the, in the second half, I want to ask you about how we can win, how we can help people toward winning. But what do you see as some of the complications of not continually uh, growing personally and developing uh, personally, as you say? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Everything is in continuous motion. Most people don't realize this. You're either growing or you're dying. You're never really standing still, okay? So uh, if you're continually working on yourself to improve, you're moving in the positive direction. If you think you're standing still, funny enough, you're not, you're going backwards. Uh, so I always think about that. Like it's always in my mind, you know, continual growth. Um, I'm gonna be moving anyway, so I might as well move forward, right? So I think some of the barriers for people is that um, they said, well, you know, I just want to stay with, I don't need, I don't need things. I don't need to do this. I don't need to go this direction or whatever it is. And they just decide to, you know, just stay as they are. The only problem is that is that it doesn't really ever happen, right? It doesn't really happen because the world is still moving. The earth, right, by itself is still in continual motion, right? So, you know, we're part of earth. We are in continual motion. So uh, days are changing, life is changing, people are growing, people are, are doing things, uh, technology is happening. It would not make any sense for us to decide that we are just going to keep on riding, a, uh, riding uh, in a, a buggy if we have the opportunity to be in a car. Just because we decide that we wanna stay still doesn't mean that things are staying still. So personal growth is really, um, I don't really think it's an option right? Because you can't be at five years old and decide you want to stay five. I mean, you just can't do that. Um, you know, you, you can, you can mentally do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can just stay five years old sure. mentally, you know, emotionally. Sure. Um, but as far as the, the, the way the thing is, is planned out by God, he's just, you're going to be moving forward. 
you know? Right. So, um, you know, I, I watched this, I watched this, uh, 500 pound life. I don't watch this show. I just happened to come up on it yesterday on YouTube and I made my husband were like looking at some of the highlights and lowlights of this show. And these people, you know, of course they're morbidly obese. They have a real reason to change their lifestyle. And there's a doctor and a team that's here to help them. And a lot of that is mental, right? A lot of that is personal growth. A lot of that emotional the eating is, has nothing to do with the eating. It really has a lot more to do with some trauma that they experienced as a young person and they just couldn't get over the trauma. So that is what they did is they ate to kind of relieve some of that. So I watched some of these stories and some of these stories are so heartbreaking. Like there's no reason why you wouldn't take the help. It's presented to you. It's here for you to get better. Some people did some people did not mm. and they didn't stay the same you say well i'm going to just stay at my 600 pounds and i'm just going to be fine with that they typically did not live very much longer they did not and so that just tells you you can't just decide i'm going to stay the same things get worse they just keep something is in motion excellent excellent you make um a huge point and I just want to highlight it, really, um, because um, it, it's just so important that what I hear you describing in terms of your approach to personal development and personal growth is really putting energy behind um, continual improvement. And if we're not putting energy behind improving and personally developing, then we are not just staying stagnant, actually, but we are degenerating. Um, I mean, we call it degenerative disease in medicine. Uh, we're not just staying still, we're actually declining, unfortunately. And I think we don't make that um, distinction made very often. And many times we actually uh, tell people that we um, are happy that they're stable. Um, but I think we should be promoting that um, you know, we want to keep you moving in a direction that you want to be, most likely, and perhaps inspiring people to look toward a higher level of health. So I appreciate your discussion and your distinction that you're, you're making. You're inspiring me to make some adjustments there, because I, I know full well what you're, what you're describing here. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, Tam Luke, I really want to understand your organization and your approach to helping people get from where they are to where they want to be because I follow you and I see your activity, I see your energy, um, I see you doing a lot of things and involving people all over the world, all different types of faces and different uh, levels of people. I love it myself and so I really want to share with our guests uh, what you're doing and get more people involved and, and moving in that direction as I think it's better for all of us. So hang in there, guys. This is going to be a wonderful second half so that we can figure out how to keep winning. We'll join you after these moments. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
Welcome back to the Winter Circle, guys. Dr. Sean here, and we're having an incredible discussion with Tam Luke. She helps people all over the world who want to level up, women who want to boss up. And so I've seen her energy, I've been following it, and I'm so excited to have her here in the Winter Circle. Tam, I wanted to understand how your organization helps people in terms of its structure. How does it help people to find and continue to personally develop? Yes, well, okay, so I have to give you some little bit of background on myself. Like I, I mentioned before, my parents were both entrepreneurs. Yes. I watched them do this. They're, neither one of them went to college, um, but somehow in the 80s and 90s, they were making six figures. Now you imagine two black people from the Midwest, and my dad was, my stepdad was very good in sales. My mom was just, I would consider her a visionary. She just was very uh, good at figuring out uh, entrepreneurship. She was always an entrepreneur. So together they worked, they worked their business. And I thought, wow, I want that because it seemed like it had a lot of freedom to it. They were able to travel whenever they wanted to. They bought a beautiful home. And, uh, and so as I grew up, I went to college for marketing and I ended up in corporate America. So I didn't want to be in corporate America. I wanted to be an entrepreneur like my parents. So on the side, I was side hustling for years. So I was a health and wellness coach. I was a, um, I did real estate at one point. I did a lot of different things. Uh, but finally in 2016, my mom passed away that year. That's when I started to realize all the skills that I had learned over the years was important and I realized that I wanted to really focus on women entrepreneurs and helping them to uh, build a freedom business like my parents had done. Um, they, they can build this uh, lifestyle that they want. And I wrote my first book then. That was when I wrote Women, Women, a Women's Side Hustle. And that was from based on my experience as a side hustling entrepreneur for all those years, watching my parents and things like that. But during that experience of writing that book, I finally understood what was holding me back all this time from really getting uh, successful. Like I was able to do a little something here and there, but really it happened after I wrote that book. And it was, Tam, you don't know your message. You don't know what you're here to say. You were missing that part. You were trying to be an entrepreneur because you saw this one and that one and they were doing this and that. But what are you here to say? Oh my goodness. So in 2018, January, I released that book. By the end of that same year, I'd hit six figures in my business. I left my uh, full-time job. And now I sit here five times uh, higher than I, I made five times more than I did when I was working in corporate America. And that was a shift, a big shift, understanding my message. So I started working with women one-on-one. -on -one. Then COVID happened. Oh my goodness. So because I learned a bunch of stuff over the years, learned how to shift, learned how to pivot, uh, I did a little, just a little pivot last year in 2020 because I was no longer able to do live events the same way. That little pivot proved to be enormous. And that's when I launched the Women Who Boss Up project. Okay, so Women Who Boss Up, it's a series of books, series of summits, lots of PR, lots of press releases and, and online shows and, and all this amazing uh, stuff that we do in this package for women uh, to help them to, you know, not sit down, you know, 2.2 million women lost their jobs during the pandemic, 2.2 million. In December of 2020, 140,000 people lost their jobs. 100% of those people were women, right? Because I always felt like women were kind of vulnerable. And we all don't really, nine to five doesn't work for most people, but I didn't think it worked for women very well at all. So it made us very vulnerable, right? And because we're the, the, my, the majority of the caregivers, right? Majority caregivers, women are. Uh, it made us vulnerable because we had, you know, to make some new decisions uh, about our family and kids and things like that. So what my Women Who Boss Up project did was say, okay, now you're in a situation 
you got to start a business because a lot of us aren't in a situation aren't in a position to have a one income family some of us are but not all of us so if you're not in that position a lot of women are starting businesses side hustles or something so i don't want them to uh to be able to give up i don't want i want them to have support so this whole project became oh my goodness bigger than i even thought it was going to be november of 2020 the first book came out our fifth book we're already on our fifth book by the one year anniversary november 20 uh, 2021 we'll probably have done eight books because i have 10 more open right now uh, where i just work with women we do a lot of pr and uh, it's it's actually incredible it's actually incredible what's happening and the and the excitement that's coming behind each and every uh edition of the book every part of the series is kind of a amazing thing that's happening wow that's incredible wow I, i've been watching you and i could tell that something was really exploding going on over there um and so who i want to get a sense of who the women are uh, kind of a profile um, what's their age are they um, business um, define that for me and so that people understand and recognize that in themselves who, who, who are these yes. women so the first book uh, was called women who boss up in life health and business so those were most of those women were coaches because I was thinking okay who would need a book someone who speaks someone who coaches someone who wants to be an author for the first time. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. So that was the first book was mostly coaches. Then the next one was women who boss up in health, wellness, and lifestyle. As you alluded, I had been a health and wellness coach for quite a long time. And I thought, oh my goodness, they need co they need clients, they need leads. They, they have a business that they do, they're doing online. They're hitting a national or international market. So I had doctors and uh, yoga pr practitioners and, and people who had any kind of uh, um, situation with health, like they had a health occurrence during their life, like they dealt with breast cancer, or it was something like that. So health, wellness, and lifestyle uh, was, oh my goodness, such an incredible book. Then the third one came up. Now this came up interestingly enough because it was, my intention was, was women of color, but I met this woman who had a huge uh, podcast, over a million downloads, an Asian uh, podcast, Asian woman of down podcast. And she said, oh yeah, I want to be a part of this. So we ended up starting Asian women who boss up. Now, funny enough, Asian women in America have never been on the cover of a book like this. Never has happened, hmm. which, which means this is the first one. And uh, that exploded, exploded. Wow. Now this is right before hashtag stop Asian hate happen this is like right before we were already done with this book and all of a sudden boom that exploded so because of the book and because of the uh, what's going on a lot of my authors started getting pulled onto tv and radio and panels and huge huge things um big tv stations and i mean it just it was just timing right divine timing so asian women who boss up was book number three the book we're on right now that is launched, that just launched a few weeks ago, International Women of Color Who Boss Up. This has women of color from all over the world, including the United States and Canada and Pakistan and Singapore. And these women are all, uh, they're all business, all types of businesses. I mean, they're coming, they're lawyers and they're, they're PhD and they're psychologists and uh, they're fitness people and they own construction companies and they're doing all kinds of stuff. But the difference is, I think I've been noticing that it has to be where you want to make a national or international touch. Like your business is a, is, has something to do with online. You're not just a local business where you have local yoga, right? Like you're just doing just local. You're only trying to get dental clients locally, right? You're in this way, I have an attorney, but she is also doing, has a coaching program, you know? So it's like, it's like they have a bigger reach. Um, the, the, the age demographic seems to be in the late thirties to early sixties. I mean, I'm getting some 
uh, older millennials and definitely Gen X. And, um, and so that's, that's what I'm seeing a lot of the times. Someone who has a lot of energy, who's out there trying to make it happen, um, who wants to collaborate with other women, those kind of women, right? Mm. And they also want to be a big a part of a big community, mm-hmm. a movement. Mm. Because what I am actually saying, because my goal is 200 titles, 200. Wow. Right now <laughs> we have 10 more open mm-hmm. women who boss up post-pandemic, black women in leadership um, uh, who boss up, which is a big organization who's we partnered with. Women who boss up, women speakers who boss up. I mean, it just goes on and on. Women who, who boss up in real estate, it just goes on and on. 200 titles. So if you're a type of woman who is like, want to be a part of a bigger conversation, right? I, I think that women who boss up post pandemic is going to be something that Good Morning America wants to talk to, wants to talk about, because that is a topic. Right. You want to be a part of something way bigger than just one little thing. I'm strategically looking for us to make a big impact. If you're that person, then you definitely want to be a part of this. Wow. Excellent. I'm thinking about, you know, 10 or 12 people that fit that category right now, you know, um, like, you know, 35 to 60, um, Mm -hmm. reasonably tech savvy, a lot of energy and on the internet um, doing things locally but also they have a um, global kind of mindset i I know several people like that so Mm -hmm. and i I can see how that would explode women who boss up in a lot of different industries um, in a lot of different parts of the world different nationalities that's perfect Mm -hmm. well excellent well thank you for sharing all of that where can people find you Um, that person that we just described, where can she look for you and how can she link up with you? Yeah, you can go to my website, tamrluck.com, T-A-M-R-L-U-C.com. Um, you can also go to bossupbestseller.com, bossupbestseller.com is the website where you can get a lot of the information that I just talked about, like what is this all about? Who are these women? I have every one of their profiles there. You also get to see like, what are we actually doing? Like, what are some of the PR you're talking about that's happening? They're getting on ABC and NBC and CBS and Fox. They're getting picked up by international radio and and you want to find that out. So go to that website, bossupbestseller.com. You can also find me at Women With Vision International on all of the platforms, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. So yeah, I would love to hear from you. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for sharing what you did. I'm very proud of you as you. my cousin and sister. Um, love what you're doing, and I love how you're um, helping people so globally in such a very important and fundamental way. Um, we couldn't help people more. I think anybody couldn't help people more uh, than giving them a direction, a pathway, some structure to develop personally. Many times we think that we can. Um, help somebody in one of these streams like medically and we wonder why they won't catch on but it's because we're not helping them in that fundamental way so thanks for offering all that you've done and I look forward to watching you and also being a part of your growth yes thank you so much and yes like you like you just said we are first cousins actually more like sister and brother he's like an older brother and you've always been a big inspiration for me and growing up we always look to you for what you're doing so i'm just excited that uh to be here and be able to share and and uh i'm actually excited to see what's going to happen next too (laughs) all right well watch closely and uh glad to be a part and to you in the winter circle thanks for joining that incredible discussion that can involve half of the population. It's just amazing, this discussion about personal growth, personal development, um, emotional growth. Uh, We've heard it called spiritual growth. Um, So many different terms that mean helping us to grow in all areas of life. So it's so awesome to have a person um, and an organization, a movement that we can look to and be a part of so that we can figure out how to win and keep winning. Until next week, take care, guys. Keep winning.